Good morning. This is uh, Thursday, June 1st, and welcome to June. And I'd like to start this month of June off by wishing Vivian Oaks a uh, happy birthday. I believe you're either 19 or 20. I can't remember. You girls grew up so fast. But I hope you have a wonderful birthday, Viv. Just know that Miss Ann and I love you very much. We think you're an awesome young lady, and we pray for you every day. Today's devotion is the staggering question. This is Ezekiel 37. God said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Can a sinner be turned to a saint? Can a twisted life be made right? There is only one appropriate answer, and it is Ezekiel 37, O Lord God, you know. Never forge ahead with your own religious common sense and say, Oh, yes, with just a little bit more Bible reading, or some more devotional time, or maybe a little bit more prayer, I can see how that could be done. It is much easier to do something than to trust in God. We see the activity, and sometimes we mistake panic, doing it, for inspiration. That is why we, f we see so few fellow workers with God, yet so many people are working for God, not with God, but for God. And isn't it much nicer when we can work side by side with somebody? We'd much rather work for God than believe in him. Do I really believe that God will do in me what I cannot do? The degree of hopelessness I have for others comes from my never realizing that God has done anything for me. We forget salvation and what he saved us from. Is my own personal experience such a wonderful realization of God's power and might that I can never have a sense of hopelessness for anyone else? In other words, thinking that he saved us, he can save anybody. Has any spiritual work been accomplished in me at all? The degree of panic activity in my life is equal to the degree of my lack of personal spiritual experience. In other words, we're not maturing. We have the initial experience of salvation, but we've never matured from that point. So everything is like panic-driven. Ezekiel 37 says, Behold, all my people, I will open your graves. When God wants to show you what human nature is, what it's like separated from himself, he shows it to you in yourself. If the Spirit of God has ever given you a vision of what you are, apart from the grace of God, and he'll only do this when his Spirit is at work in you, then you know that in reality there is no criminal half as bad as us, without God's grace. My grave has been opened by God's salvation, and I know that in me, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. That's Romans 7. God's Spirit continually reveals to his children what human nature is like, apart from his grace. The challenge I have for us is for us to take time today and pray and thank God for his saving grace that has saved a sinner such as I. Could we stop today and just thank God for his saving grace for a sinner such as I? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for that story out of Ezekiel and the dry bones. And Lord, that's referencing our lives before Jesus. We were sinful dry bones, and your, your spirit came upon us in salvation and uh, gave us life and life more abundantly. So, Father, today we thank you for the grace that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, that we can stop and reflect that there's no criminal as bad as I was without Jesus. So let us pray today and thank God for his grace. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless and I'll see you tomorrow.